Right, uh, welcome back. Uh, we're going to be talking about wildcards today in SQL. So wildcards are used to basically help you find information, but we mightn't exactly know how much that information is in the database or what variation or combination um, that piece of data is in the system. So what wildcards does is allow you to create a query that has parameters that says, find me something close to this and bring me back all the results and then I can review it. And then um, it allows you to basically then further filter it down once you find the data. It's used a lot in machine learning and um, be good for pattern searching as well. So uh, let's get into it and let's see what it's all about. So we're going to, in a previous video we you we did on just based on selecting records, you should see it on the video screen here. Uh, what we did was we went off and selected a lot of records and we went showed you how to do it. But that's all well good, but actually what we want to do is now find a different way to approach that where we don't know exactly what the values are in a system, but we want to do a combination of things just to see what there are. So we're using the same um, table here, and we're going to use, again, that we use in that video, and we're going to use name uh, from that table, okay? So the idea here about this wildcard statement is it's just take you through it uh, very quickly, and then we'll take you through a couple of different combinations. So the idea behind it is that you basically, when you run the query, um, you've got this thing called a wildcard string. Um, and basically that percentage sign basically means is when you ask it to go into the table and look at names, it's bring me everything back where name has something ending with L, um, but we don't know what the characters are before. So what it's basically doing is saying it could be anything before L, but whatever it is, bring it back and put it onto the screen for me. Now, just to show you the table here, here's the table here, and here's the table name. So Ireland, uh, is obviously in there, all these different countries in there, but there's nothing finishing with L, okay? So we go back in here to this query. This query will basically return blank. Well, it's for blank here, but I'll actually run it again, okay? So basically, as you can see, the um, screen and the output from that has returned nothing, and that is correct, okay? So what if we want to find something that ends in a value? Um, we've already looked at uh, L, we knew at L there was nothing on the system, but maybe there might be something in there. If we have a value here, um, we know there's Hungary, Germany, there's two there, right? So if you want to find something again, we don't really look at L, but we actually want to return values that look to end in a Y, okay? So you look at here, we've got Hungary, Germany, Italy, and Norway. So those four values are there, okay? So yeah, we have Norway, Italy, Hungary, okay? Um, so that's how you would go about finding um, a, any value from a particular table name um, with a particular value at the end, but doesn't matter what's before it, okay? So what about the scenario where you want something to start, find something that starts with a letter? So all you would do is this, okay? So what this is basically doing now is saying, find me everything on that table, on that, on that column. It starts with A, and it doesn't matter what's after it, okay? So we go back here to some values in here. So we have Australia, Austria, and Austria. So I expect this to return three values, okay? There you go, Australia, Austria. So it's what it's doing is find everything starts with A, but it's ignoring everything that's after the A. So uh, that's one example, okay? So say you want to find something that at a particular point, and you know it's always at that particular point in your data on the table name, but you don't know what's before it. So what you could do here is, okay? I'm gonna take this as an example. So. We are basically telling the, the program to go and look at the actual table name, bring us back everything that in the fourth character has a G, but it doesn't matter what's before the G for the first three characters. So if we go back to the table again, we look down through this, scan through this, the only one that matches this criteria is Hong Kong. So there's a G there and there's three characters before it, but none of the other values, there's nothing in there. So if we go back into this query and run this, 
yeah, return to Hong Kong. That's how you would actually, if you find a value or values or you want to see what's, what's on the table for that particular pattern. Now, the reason we're doing this is it could be that it always should be a specific value and you could want to check that they're all the same values and there, if there's an error in there, and this is obviously a data quality problem, you would do this. So that's just kind of an example of how we would achieve that, okay? So say you wanted to uh, find a space in um, the string on your table column. So the way you would go about doing that is actually quite straightforward. What you do again is you would have the percentage sign and you would basically say, uh, give me the percentage sign, hit the space bar, and the percentage sign again. And all that does is it's telling the program that I'm looking for anything in that particular table name that has a space in it. If we rerun this, now it's going to come back the same again as Hong Kong. And the reason that is that's the only string in that table name that actually has space in it. So just to confirm that, if we quickly scan down through here, none of these have a space in between, but Hong Kong on row four there, that value there, has a space. So that's how you would find something with a space in it. Okay, so let's just go back to the editor and let's look at the next uh, wildcard search we want to do. So our final uh, thing we want to do here is we want to find a string that starts and ends with a particular value, but we don't know what's in between. Okay. Now, the way you would do this, we're going to pick an actual value here. So we know that Hungary is on that table, right? And if we just type in Hungary for a second. All right. Now, Hungary, as we can see, is one, two, three, four, five. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six. There's seven characters in there, right? But say you wanted to search something for H ending in Y, and you know it should be Hungary, but the characters in between might necessarily spell, might be misspelled. So what you would do is you would just use the underscore five times, because we know there's five letters, characters between H and Y. So it's one, two, three, four, five. Now on the screen, it just looks like one continuous line, but in actual fact, that's five underscores. And what that's basically doing is telling the program, so it's find me anything with H, ends with Y, but has five characters in between, we don't know what it is. So if we run that, okay, brings back Hungary, all right? So that is how you would go about um, finding hung Hungary. There could be a scenario where Hungary is misspelt, but in this instance, it would still return it back, but it would turn back what you see on the screen and obviously the misspelling as well. It'd be good for data quality work or anything, any issues you have in the database with any of your data items where they're not consistently the same value. So that today is our tutorial on how to apply wildcards, very quick introduction to it. I hope you got use from it. If you like this video, can you please hit the subscribe button and the like, and we'll be having a new video soon. Okay, take care, bye.